Hello again, welcome to the last in our little series here about adaptation theory. So this one, we're gonna be talking about the strategies of adaptation. So Hutchin discusses three different, what she calls modes of engagement of adaptations. Telling versus showing slash performance. She considers those the same thing. So showing and performance versus interactive. So three modes of engagement. We, in this class, are gonna be focusing on telling and showing slash performance. Interactive is fine and wonderful and great, but we're not analyzing any kind of interactive media in this class like a video game. So for our purposes, it's less important. The class is children's literature into film. So that's what we're focusing on. Telling then are novels, books, poetry, anything written or solely verbal. For Hutchin, telling is anything written. And if you've taken a creative writing course, you may have heard like show, don't tell. Just put that aside for this, that she's not talking about it in that way. Anything written, even if you're showing in the creative writing sense, is still telling for Hutchin. If you're not a creative writer, you know what I'm talking about. Just don't worry about any of that. Um, <laughs> so just side note. So for her telling then anything written, anything verbal. Showing or performance then includes things like film television, theater, dance, music, art, anything that's not written or solely verbal, but that has visual and auditory elements. So here's a quote from H Hutchins chapter two, and her chapter two is not required, but it's posted in case you're interested and you want to learn more about it. But here's a quote from that chapter, which discusses this idea a little bit more. In the move from telling to showing, a performance adaptation must dramatize. Description, narration, and represented thoughts must be transcoded into speech, actions, sounds, and visual images. Conflicts and ideological differences between characters must be made visible and audible. In the process of dramatization, there is inevitably a certain amount of re-accentuation and refocusing of themes, characters, and plots. What I think this means is that when moving from the telling mode to the showing mode, we're forced to externalize things. Conflicts must be made, quote, visible and audible, right, rather than written. Fiction uses description, narration, and direct, quote, representation of thought, right? We read the person's like, I thought this, I thought that. But these things don't work the same way in film, in the showing mode. So they have to be translated into speech, actions, sound, and visual images. The direct narration that we are reading, the direct line into their head is gone. You have to find a different way to do it. Speech, action, sound, and visual images. So I made a little chart to summarize some of the differences that Hutchin discusses in chapter two. And I'll show it to you now. Telling immerses us through imagination in a fictional world. So we are using our imagination to visualize the things we are reading about in the telling mode. In the, or hearing about if, if we're listening. In the showing mode. It immerses us through the perception of the aural and the visual. So aural is anything you hear and visual. So we have these two other elements that you don't necessarily have when, you're, when something's written. Telling is verbal or written. Showing is visual and oral. Telling describes, explains, summarizes, expands. These are the things that telling does well and does best does most. Showing, though, is a direct experience through sound and sight in real time, you are, you are experiencing it as it's happening. In a novel, you can condense 10 years into a paragraph or one minute into five pages. That's, you can do that a little bit in, in the showing mode, but it's, it's a little more difficult because you're actually experiencing it. So in the telling mode, you have access to internal thoughts and feelings. In the showing mode, you must embody and enact those feelings and thoughts. So maybe you have to do a voiceover, or maybe you have to have a character talk about something that they would be thinking about in a, in a novel. In the telling mode, the story is imagined or visualized in our head. And in the showing mode, it's directly perceived. It's perceived for us. It takes away some of that choice from us because instead of imagining how Harry Potter looks, I see Daniel Radcliffe. And the last part is that um, telling uses symbolic or conventional signs. In other words, language, which is a sign, and general symbols, uh, figurative language, cold as ice, or a symbol of like an eagle meaning freedom or uh, the United States or a heart meaning love. Um, something that's connected to the thing symbolically. Showing uses indexical or iconic signs, right? So instead of a heart, you need a specific person. I mean, you can still use symbolic things, but it's a specific person, it's a specific place, it's a specific thing. Because it, whereas in, the, in a novel, I might describe to you a table in a 
showing or performance mode, the table's gonna be there and you're gonna see it. So it's, it's specific. Hudgen gives us four main strategies of adaptation that adapters use when moving between modes. The first one is substitution, trading one thing for another or replacing a character or plot element with a new one. And an example from Little Mermaid is the hands-off sea witch that Little Mermaid goes to see in the book versus the invasive Ursula, the drag queen witch from Disney's Little Mermaid. The second is expansion and or addition. So this is adding things that weren't in the original, character, plot points, et cetera. An example from Little Mermaid would be Sebastian. That's a totally new character that we do not see in the original. The third is subtraction. So these are removing things entirely without replacing them. We had substitution, now we have subtraction. For example, the sisters show up to ask Ariel to kill Prince Eric so she can be free and they bring her that dagger. Well, that's just gone. That part's not there anymore. That's not an option and they don't replace it with something. And the last one then is distillation or compression. So this is combining multiple elements into one. Like if there are many instances of something happening in the original and you pick one or two, you're distilling or compressing things. So for example, in The Little Mermaid, the sisters don't all go to the surface in succession before Ariel does like they do in the book. She's the only one who does it. They compressed. So that's now I have learned, and now I love, love to read children's books from above. And then I'll see oh, films that show me best mermaid girl. to see you in class.